going to try to follow Senator Schumer's admonition. Once told me that every speaker should follow the three Bs. He should be truthful, he should be brief, and he should be seated. So, just in terms of the brief outline, in terms of the question that uh, you know you posed, it's interesting to note that the Rambam puts the laws of Kashrus, Machos Asuas, and Hilchoshrita in his volume Kedusha, and including that is also Yisur Ebiyev forbidden sexual relationships. Because we believe that through observing the ritual of kashras and all the other laws related to it, we attain a certain level of kedusha, And that's a function of discipline and purpose. The Torah tells us kedusha to you. The Rabbat says kedusha to you is an overarching principle that even things that are, are permitted by the Torah but if they're socially unacceptable, they'll also fall under the rubric of Kedoshim Tiyu. Ramban in his famous language says, otherwise he, the person could be a maneuver with Shushat Torah. He could be an abhorrent person with the sanction of the Torah. So it goes without saying that the Kedusha represented, that with the Ram puts Shrit and so on, Elvis Kedusha, and the Kedusha Kedoshim Tiyu can't be severed. That doesn't mean to say that they're exactly the same category. Allah ultimately is a legal system, and they're not. Somebody can violate the law in one area, and it doesn't necessarily compromise the status in a different area. Experts on this who have told you otherwise, especially people from uh, you know, the American Labor uh, Union or um, Commercial Workers Union, um, and have argued this case over and over ago that somehow, for example, I agree that the kashras has been compromised is simply inaccurate. But that doesn't mean to say that we're not concerned about these issues. We have to be concerned, I think, on lots of levels. First of all, the, the underpinning of the entire Torah, I said, is Kedosh Tiyu. A basic Jewish ethics is based on Valach the Bedrach of the copying Hashem, following in His ways. So that's fundamental principle. There's another reason why it's important. It's simply we have to be concerned of the perception of kosher to the general war world, and not just kosher. Everything else related to you know, our observance. Um, the, the other reason is we're concerned with the perception of kosher and that our Jews appear because we don't want to create a feel Hashem. And also, we're concerned about how our feathered Jewish brethren view this, because we want to reach out to them. And uh, all of those things are issues that are, you know, we have to be concerned with and find balance. And it's not always so obvious how to strike that balance. Like the name of the organization is taken, taken away the conundrum. Dungeon that you know, remains unresolved. And I think what you're learning here in Yeshiva, and you know, what's important to know is that these issues are not obvious sometimes. And there's nuance that's required, and the judgment calls. They're not always obvious what directions they, they should go, especially when balancing all these different disparate concerns. And you know, we have to sometimes live in the tension of a tangle of not knowing the exact resolution. But I just want to mention, just juggling all these issues, one of the things in terms of the Hashem that we have to think about, I myself have issues with the Hashem and I just want to tell you briefly what they are. I've met with Rabbi Morris Allen and Rabbi Michael Siegel in my office about them. Um, but I, I want to put the Hashem in a different context. My concern with them is that I believe that these issues that were raised are more appropriately handled by federal and state officials that have the mandate, the authority, the expertise to deal with them. Social issues, environmental issues, workers' issues. There's a whole plethora of federal agencies, OSHA, USDA, FDA, EPA, that deal with these issues. And they have that, that mandate, and I don't think we can do it as well or as appropriately as them. Um, and 
somebody, and I, what I've told people in Ashton Senate, I think the definition of some of these standards that they're going to try, and, and, and I say this well mainly, to reach are going to be difficult, to concretize them, they're, they're very amorphous. And I, 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 I told this to Harry Seeley, the f very first one he told me was that they only can give their stamp to somebody who, to, to a company that um, pays its workers at least the median, the median wage in that industry. Not the average, the median wage. Which means by definition that one half of the companies in the United States are unethical or unworthy of their approval. And I, don't, I think that's something that ought to be thought about. I think just on its face, it's, it, it's not correct. Um, so just defining them is difficult. Having said that, I think that they have succeeded in terms of a in, 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 an initiative, I, I, I look at some of them, I think, that my colleague, Barry Schaffner, in that I think that it's, that it's something positive in this respect. One of the things, as I said, we're balancing is people's perception of kosher. We, at the OU, and here generally, we're interested in people keeping kosher. We're interested in keeping kosher, the people keep kosher because it's basic tenet of our faith. But even more fundamentally, what defined the Jewish home for generations was that people, people kept kosher. And when I was growing up as a boy, um, I remember we I had friends, they weren't Orthodox, they were conservative Jews, um, who had kosher homes, whatever the standard was, but they had two sets of dishes. They didn't keep kosher in the home, but they, they didn't keep kosher out of the home necessarily, but they did within the home. And that enhanced their sense of Jewish identity. If we, the erosion of people's perception of kosher um, by almost willy-nilly will affect their, their identity as Jews. So this whole story has emerged in the Hill Hashem was a matter of concern for us on lots of levels, but most, but not at all. I mean, not at least the least of it is being the average American Jew, not the observant Jew. What was his perception and in terms of his identity with Judaism? So, Hashem said anything in that sense, and I mentioned problems that I see with it, but the initiative itself, I think, is meant also on their part to try to bring their own constituency back to kosher. There are such, you know, very, very, that, you know, beginnings of such notions in both the conservative and reform movement, and that's something that we should applaud and we should encourage. Um, I, I usually, when I, you know, when I wonder what's the right thing to do, I always think to myself, what would the love have done? And it's interesting that the love was actually engaged in this very issue. One to his enormous detriment, when he first came to Boston, he took up, so I've read five of the two of my piece. So, you know, maybe I'll get to it when I get the question and answer. <laughs> standards of cashiers in Boston, and also the treatment of the shelter, that he thought that they were working very long hours, they were being you know, just abusive hours, and he took a standard at it, and it, it cost him enormously, because there were the, the different forces within Boston, I have to say the various forces, that you know, make claims against them, absolutely false claims, that uh, you know, they were somehow undertake in terms of the cashiers. This went to the Attorney General of Massachusetts. At the end, after the investigation, what was discovered was that the loan was paid to people out of his pocket. Um, and I think the judge said he never met a man as honest as the mother. But the, the, the point I made was this was a man, he was the greatest genius of his time. This was people, this was his concern, and he paid very dearly for it. Actually, changed his whole, uh, I think, his notion in terms of leadership subsequently. The other thing about the love, which I will speak about the questions, was about the creation of a pen and how do we respond to this kind of question. But I'll leave that for that. <laughs>